On November the 17th, Hong Kong hosted China in a World Cup qualifier that was billed as their biggest match in 30 years. Back in 1985, Ku Kan scored the winner in Hong Kong's historic victory that shocked China and ended their hopes of qualifying for the 1986 World Cup. I remember that time we played China. We were a Hong Kong team that really wanted to win. But speaking honestly and from the heart, we knew we were likely to lose. We never expected to win, but incredibly, we were fortunate enough to triumph. We won 2-1, which meant we made the next World Cup qualifying stage. Of course, I was delighted to score, but at that moment, the stadium went very quiet. Our Hong Kong team had won, and it went totally silent. It was a very special moment. Even now, people in Hong Kong talk about that match with great pride. Watching that match brings huge excitement and inspires me as well. Much has changed since that game. In 1997, Hong Kong became a special administrative region of China. But the former British colony remains an international city. And that's reflected in the football team, which includes naturalized Hong Kongers. I think they have welcomed us very well. I was a little bit nervous thinking about how they would react to our presence in the squad. Because we're not originally from Hong Kong. But they have received us really well. I'm very happy with our performance and to be part of this team. I was expecting a warm welcome, and that's exactly what happened. It's my first time playing for a national team, which is very important to me. Everyone welcomed me, and I was very happy to join Hong Kong's squad. Both teams trailed Qatar for the one automatic spot in the third round of Asian World Cup qualifiers. Massive, it's the biggest football match in Hong Kong in living memory, really. But also on the pitch, it's very significant as well because, somewhat remarkably, Hong Kong, who are the fifth seeds in this group, are um, ahead of China, the second seeds in this group. And if they, if they win, it will probably end China's hopes. Hong Kong feels like the little brother of China and it's sort of so much smaller. Um, so we're definitely the underdogs. It's going to be a great game. There's going to be a great atmosphere. The fans have been been brilliant in, in all our home matches so far. All the players are just going to go out there and, and give it their all and leave everything on the pitch. I really uh, want to enjoy this pressure. So our players also, uh, they are ready to fight. I think this is, can be a good festival for Hong Kong citizens as well. So we can be get together like, as a unit to fight for the country. With the larger Hong Kong Stadium unavailable, the game was played at the more intimate Mong Kok Stadium, but the atmosphere was suitably intense. As expected, the favourites from the mainland started strongly. Yang Zhu so close to an early goal for China. But the minnows from Hong Kong showed character in front of their fans and had their chances. James McKee was unlucky not to put the hosts ahead. And Alessandro Ferreira's header narrowly missed before half-time. And then, finally, a breakthrough. But Hong Kong's joy was short-lived, as the goal was ruled out. Both teams needed the win to challenge Qatar at the top of the group. And China, the world's most populous nation, pressed hard to keep alive their dream of reaching Russia in 2018. But somehow Hong Kong held out for a goalless draw. Not quite the win of 1985, but a memorable result against the odds. Hong Kong standing tall against their big local rivals. Perfect. It was perfect. I think that every player loves playing in a full stadium like that. I think that the Hong Kong fans gave us huge support. I think the atmosphere gave us even more motivation to fight. It's like they say, die for Hong Kong. For me, it would, of course, have been great for us to win. 
that China is a really strong team. And to draw was a good result. It really wasn't bad for Hong Kong, because we drew in China and now here. So I think this is a good moment for us.